And welcome back to Game Escape. Here today to review F Zero, one of my favorite games for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And uh, a while back, I did a, uh, a review on Mario 64, and I said, you know, this is probably the greatest launch title ever. And I think right behind that, you have F Zero, which was released um, right at the launch of the Super Nintendo here in the United States, also in Japan in 1990. And uh, it is just a wonderful game, and I've been playing it recently, just kind of pulled it out of the uh, the closet and popped it in, and I was shocked at how good this game remains. And as we're sort of on the eve of the launch of the PS4 and the Xbox 360, I, uh, I, I, I often wonder, you know, will we ever get a launch game as good as this, or as good as Mario 64, a, a game that comes out right when the console hits the market and remains one of the best games on that platform for its entire life and then of course uh, into the future. I'm not sure that current game development allows for that kind of mastery on new hardware right as it's being developed, but F-Zero uh, was a, a, a beautiful embodiment of that. It still plays so fast. It still is so beautiful to control. The the control system in this game, it, it's it's very, very tight, but you still feel like you're right on the edge, that you're, you're driving at high speeds and these powerful hover racers, and the slightest move will sort of send you spinning towards the uh, electrically charged grates on the side of the track. I mean, when this game was released, I remember I, I, I talked about this in my SNES vs. Genesis video. I didn't have a Super Nintendo at the time, and I, I remember going over to a relative's house and seeing this game, and I was completely blown away. I mean, the graphical leap between F-Zero and really anything on the NES was so massive that it, it just sold you on this new platform, and I think, you know, as an Obviously, I'm not the only one to make this point, but that's a problem that the 8th generation consoles have, and that is, you know, are they really that graphical leap uh, forward? F-Zero really was. I mean, this, the Mode 7 scaling, this was, um, this and Pilot Wings, these were really the first two games that I saw that utilized that technology, and I was completely blown away by it at the time. I think even, and, and Pilot Wings does a great job of using that technology and it's still uh, eminently playable today. I think F-Zero is, you know, just a, a, a notch above as far as the pure visual presentation of, of Mode 7 graphics. I think Pilot Wings is probably the, the, the more technical game and the kind of game that, that you can come back to a little bit more and try to master everything, but... F-Zero just looks the best. Um, that's not to say that F-Zero is in any way simple. It's it's still incredibly challenging today. Uh, the tracks, the, I mean, the track designs still pop off the screen. These are some of the best design visuals on the SNES. Um, I mean, yeah, they're they're to a certain degree uh, repetitive at times, but you know, take it back to 1990. Um, and think about what you were playing at the time and compare it to F-Zero. Absolutely tremendous. There are not uh, a ton of modes to the game. I mean, you've, you've got the, uh, you know, essentially three different Grand Prix's, uh, ranging in difficulty from the Knight class to the King class. Um, you've got the two-player mode, and, uh, and that's about it. You know, you've got the, the practice mode. But you didn't need much more than that, and, and I, I think that anyone today who has uh, the slightest interest in this game can just pop it in and play through the three different Grand Prix options, and it's still, you know, it's it's still fun, it's still challenging, and it still feels, if you're playing it on the original hardware at least, it, it, it still feels like a shiny innovative new product because of that tight control system. If, if, if you pick it up on the virtual console, um, I, I, I think you you experience that a little bit less. Um, 
because I think in a way you just need a Super Nintendo controller to fully enjoy this game. Um, it is uh, one of uh, one of the gems, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, you know, loose on eBay, I paid maybe ten or twelve dollars for it. Obviously, sealed sealed Super Nintendo games are expensive. Well, not sealed, but boxed Super Nintendo games very expensive. Sealed, uh, I, I, I wouldn't know what it goes for. Uh, sealed, but uh, if you if you don't have the original hardware, it's still worth playing um, on the Virtual Console, and it is uh, just just one of those games that needs to be experienced. And quite frankly, a, a series that I think Nintendo should you know rediscover. I mean, it seems like they forgot about it after the release of uh, the F-Zero games uh, on the GameCube, which were actually excellent, co-developed by Sega. I think shortly after that, Miyamoto came out and said something to the effect that, well, F-Zero's had its time, and that time has, has passed. Uh, I, I really don't see that. I think, you know, we got a taste of F-Zero on the uh, Nintendo Land game for the Wii U, and it was fun, but obviously so condensed. I think now, particularly as the Wii U slowly picks up some momentum, I think it would be a, a, an absolutely great time to release another high-quality F-Zero game with those, you know, popping visuals and that great sense of speed. So I thank you guys for watching Game Escape, and I will be back shortly with a new video.